Hello everyone, Engineer Wannabe here and today we're going to be taking a look and doing a comparison of the Rado Captain Cook and the Seiko SPB149J1. Uh, the SPB149J1 is Seiko's first ever dive watch uh, from or a reinterpretation of Seiko's first ever dive watch from 1965 and Rado's Captain Cook was Rado's first ever dive watch. Uh, from 1962 so I thought this would be a very fitting comparison so let's go ahead and take a look at them just want to say thank you to Jim Bijou for providing these Rado Captain Cooks uh, in for review this video would not have been possible without uh, without them so a big thank you and a big shout out to Jim Bijou okay so with uh, Seiko and Rado you have quite a few options when it comes to these watches you have a couple of different size options with Seiko, you have uh, the 42 millimeter version that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, with Rado, you have uh, the 42 millimeter version here, and also a 37 millimeter version. With Seiko, this of course is the 40 millimeter version. Uh, so let's put this guy aside and take a look at these two. Okay, so. The Rado here, as I just mentioned, is the 42 millimeter version. Uh, it is a very nice 42 millimeter version, as the lug to lug is pretty compact at around 48 approximately. The Seiko here is a 40 millimeter version, very wearable as well. The lug to lug here is a around 47 and a half. Uh, so you have uh, two very wearable watches even though uh, the 42 millimeter size of this uh, Rado Captain Cook may seem a bit daunting to those with a smaller wrist uh, uh, you will see when I put it on my uh, smaller wrist it does wear quite well so does this Seiko uh, so these uh, watches are geared uh, universally towards uh, most wrist sizes, I'd say. Uh, they wear a bit big on my wrist, but they are manageable. Um, but anyone with a wrist bigger than mine, which should be most people, uh, should be able to enjoy both these watches really well. Uh, so let's go ahead with the uh, dimensions here. Uh, I just mentioned the Rado here is 42 millimeters. Uh, lug to lug is around approximately 48 millimeters, and its thickness, which is one of its strengths uh, with the domed sapphire crystal and the protruding case back is approximately 12 millimeters. So with the Seiko, uh, you have a 40 and a half millimeter diameter. The lug to lug is approximately 47 and a half. And uh, with the domed sapphire crystal and the protruding case back, the thickness is close to 14 millimeters. I think it's around 13 and a half so uh, quite a bit thicker the movements on these two watches are really quite different on the uh, left here with the Rado you have a ETA 2824 based movement a Swiss movement on the right of course you have an in-house Seiko movement a Japanese movement uh, on the right is the 6R35 which is based on the 6R15 which is based on the 7S26 um, but uh, with quite a few upgrades so uh, the Seiko 6R35 has a 70 hour power reserve, the Rado has an 80 hour power reserve. The Rado uh, has no specified accuracy tolerance, at least not that I could find. Um, the Seiko's accu accuracy tolerance is around minus 15 to plus 25. Uh, the Rado right now is running at uh, a better rate, although that could vary from model to model. Uh, this one is running at around plus one which is really really good on the Seiko uh, on the other hand is running at around plus five to seven so two very solid options when it comes to movements on both you really can't go wrong I think uh, the Rado has the more refined movement but the Seiko has the more robust movement the Rado comes in a choice of a beads of rice bracelet as you can see here or the reason why this guy is here is because of uh, the fact that it also comes with a uh, three link bracelet as well. The three link bracelet on a 42 millimeter uh, watch is quite imposing. 
uh, as you can see that uh, center part of that end link is really long and it's really straight it doesn't curve down at all uh, and that voids it uh, from me being able to uh, even consider wearing it uh, on the bracelet at least as you can see it pops straight out and uh, significantly so on my six and a quarter inch wrist uh, so if you have anything less than a seven inch wrist I would say uh, you would probably want to go with the beads of rice bracelet here so the beads of rice bracelet wears really well on my six and a quarter inch wrist around 16 centimeters as it curves down immediately and it's incredibly comfortable as well now, as you can see uh, it is a big watch on my smaller wrist but it is very manageable if uh, you are not too concerned with uh, with the size uh, but anyone with a slightly bigger wrist than mine should be able to easily enjoy this watch the Seiko and it wears really well on uh, on any wrist as you can see that uh, end link curves down immediately unlike with the Rado the end link uh, goes straight out so because the end link even though it's a protruding end link it curves down instantly and so it makes it uh, very manageable on any wrist the Rado wears uh, really well for its size because of how thin it is compared to the Seiko it is quite a bit thinner than the Seiko and uh, so it does wear quite a bit better it's a very nice case shape as well so let's go ahead and compare the bezel that's Rado's uh, the Rado Captain Cook's bezel action it's a little rattly uh, but it is very secure there is no bounce or play uh, to speak of. Switching to Seiko's uh, bezel action. So it's a bit more creamy. It is not as precise. It's not, there's a little bit of play compared to the Rado. Overall though, I would give the bezel feel to the Seiko, although the Rado is no slouch. Now the Rado, this specific Rado, has a um, matte ceramic bezel, which is really uh, interesting. Uh, not too frequently do you find a matte ceramic bezel, but it is ceramic. It's very nicely done. Uh, this Rado, your other option, has a glossy ceramic bezel, as you can see there. The dials are interesting as well. Seiko has applied indices and uh, Lumibrite on the indices. Narado has a printed dial, but it is a bold dial, so it's a dome dial. Very interesting, very visually striking to see that dome, uh, dome dial with that dome sapphire crystal. Um, but again, uh, there's a three-dimensionality with the, the Seiko that I prefer. Uh, but you may prefer the, the vintage printed look on the Rado. Uh, as for loom performance, the Seiko takes it away without contest. Rado's loom uh, application here is very uh, uh, moderate and will most likely not last you the night. Uh, price point. Uh, the Seiko's price point is quite a bit less. It's actually about half uh, the price of the Rado. Uh, however, this specific model is not a very well discounted model um, and you will be unlikely to get a sale or a deal on this, while the Rado you most likely will. So, uh, the Rado in Canadian dollars is around 3100 with the Beats of Rice bracelet and uh, the Seiko here is 1750 Canadian dollars. So almost half the price 
Now for that money with the Rado, you get a really nice watch roll like pouch. And inside that pouch, you get a NATO strap, extra spring bars, and a leather strap. And this leather strap has a really nice deployant, an Omega style deployant, uh, where the uh, keeper or the, the tail of the the strap goes into your wrist. Uh, it's a bit hard to describe, but uh, basically you won't see the tail of, of uh, the strap on the outside of your wrist. So, very nice deployant uh, buckle in there. Very, very nice uh, NATO strap as well. Very well made. Uh, with Seiko's offering, and only with this model, you get an additional uh, silicone strap a really excellent silicone strap uh, mind you uh, with the metal hardware excellent buckle everything is uh, is really high quality here as well however I think Rado takes it when it comes to um, amenities and extras uh, because every single model of uh, Rado's Captain Cook 42 millimeter at least comes with the extra strap uh, the bracelet and uh, of course the NATO strap. Lug width I forgot to mention here is a 21 millimeter lug width so you're gonna need those uh, uh, additional strap options. Uh, the Seiko here is a more standard 20 millimeters so you have uh, plenty of options. Alright guys so this has been a uh, fairly quick fairly laid-back uh, comparison of uh, the Seiko SPB 149 and the Rado Captain Cook. This specific one is the Revolution uh, Limited Edition. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care, stay safe out there, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.